We we'll begin with breaking news at five. Another victim has been pulled from the scene of yesterday's massive fire in New Bedford. It's the second victim pulled from what's left of that building. Today we learned the victim recovered yesterday is 59 year old Manuel Marrera. He was a resident of the four story rooming house. We're there today as crews began demolishing the charred remains of the building. We're also seeing new eyewitness video of firefighters rescuing a man and dog from a burning apartment. We have team coverage for you tonight. Matt Paddock is standing by with what's being done to help the dozens of people displaced by the fire. But first, Sheena Loschuto joins us with the latest on the investigation. Sheena. Well, first off, I want to give you guys an update. The chief, the fire chief is giving an update right now behind me. I'm just listening in to our other crew doing the interview. They tell us that a cadaver dog is what eventually helped find that second victim inside that home that is now completely destroyed. So tonight we know two people are now confirmed dead. They will now continue to tear this building down as investigators look for answers. What caused this fire? Destroying this building on a cushion Avenue, killing two people, displacing dozens of others. That is the question New Bedford's fire chief says they're working to get answers to. A majority of the day Wednesday spent demolishing the building and looking for the second victim that was unaccounted for for hours. A much different site than what crews battled Tuesday. Massive flames and smoke, forcing people to jump out of windows to escape. New video shows exactly what firefighters were up against. The fire chief confirms crews made three ladder rescues. A dog. This is one of them. One person and a pet rescued from the side as heavy smoke filled a Cushnet Avenue. And also new at five, I just saw the medical examiner's office arrive here on scene. Now, people who lived in that building, they lost everything. We've been meeting a lot of people throughout this devastating scene. Matt Paddock joins us with more information on the efforts to help them. Yeah, Sheena, according to Red Cross, 28 of those victims are using their services after a fire tore through this Akushna Avenue rooming house. Now, the city leaders and local organizations are doing all that they can to help those displaced. You know, you lost everything. 32 units, no kitchen, and shared bathrooms. That's how Reverend David Lima described the living conditions of the rooming house on a Kushnet Ave. 28 victims left to pick up the pieces after a fire tore through the place they called home, leaving nothing but rubble. Not just the tra traumatic events of losing everything that you have, and these people have so little, but they lost even that little that they have. Reverend David Lima is the executive minister at Inner Church Council. Part of a direct fire service coordination collaboration started after the Thanksgiving fire two years ago. One of the difficulties is trying to be able to help piece these people's lives together afterwards. Lima says when tragedy strikes, it's all hands on deck. Finding victims counseling, shelter, food and clothing through a number of local nonprofits in the city. The, the whole community coming together to help is what helps make the change and makes the difference. I had one counseling center already say that they, they'll be able to help people and give them case management uh, to help navigate through the housing system and, and advocate for them. Mayor Mitchell even commending the work of the countless groups for their quick response in finding housing for those displaced. In HSPM facilitated the placement of people uh, who had been displaced by the fire like within hours. The response happens when people work together and it works really well uh, in New Bedford. Reverend Lima says that anyone who would like to help out can do so by contacting the Interchurch Council with all donations from clothing to gift cards going back to those victims. But reporting live in New Bedford, Matt Paddock, 12 News. First breaking news, the state fire marshal's office says crews have found a second victim from yesterday's fire on Akushnet Avenue. This afternoon, New Bedford, uh, police off, uh, New Bedford firefighters also released pictures taken inside the burning building and thermal imaging photos taken from one of their drones. Now, earlier today, we also learned the name of the first victim who firefighters pulled from that building last night. 12 News reporter Sheena Loschuto has been at the scene all day. She begins our team coverage tonight with what we know about the investigation. 
Well, tonight we can confirm two people have died in this fire, and now the demolition of that building continues as investigators look for answers. Neighbors watch in disbelief Tuesday, this scene unfolding right outside of their window. People jumping from a burning building on a Kushnet Avenue. It's, it's, it's too, too much. Jason Gilmore was one of them, desperate to leave his third floor room as the flames grew, impending danger quite literally at his door. Uh, we just, uh, the alarm kept on was going on and when we were trying to make it out of my room, uh, all I saw was smoke. I was trying to make it down the stairs, but couldn't make it down those stairs. The fire was coming, coming up too quickly. He makes it to the fire escape and jumps from the second floor. He says he was one of the five people taken to the hospital. I thank God that I'm still here, you know, and just I pray and everything like that, and I pray for the others, you know. New video also showing firefighters rescuing a resident and a pet using a ladder truck. It was soon after this, parts of the building began collapsing. Two people are confirmed dead. Authorities have identified one victim as 59-year-old Manuel Morera. He was on the fourth floor. Authorities recovered a second victim but have not identified them. Crews were spotted using a drone all day to look inside what's left of that building. Now tonight, crews are still looking into what caused the fire and where exactly it started. Reporting live in New Bedford, I'm Sheena Loshudo, 12 News. And the New Bedford Fire Department says the Cushion Avenue building had more than two dozen units, so a lot of people need help. 12 News reporter Matt Patta continues our in-depth coverage now with what the city is doing for people who live there. Matt. Well, Mike Shannon, according to Red Cross, 28 of those victims have reached out for assistance after a fire tore through this Akushna Avenue boarding house. Now, city and local leaders are now doing all that they can to help those who have been displaced. Reverend David Lima was on his way to a meeting in Fairhaven on Tuesday when... But I noticed uh, a thicker set of clouds that appeared to be going up rather than down. When I rolled down my window, I smelled the smoke, so I knew that we had a fire again. Heading to the scene and getting right to work. We were on site for pretty much most of the evening till about 10 o'clock. Lima, the executive minister at Intercouncil Church, is also part of a direct fire service coordination collaboration started after the Thanksgiving fire in New Bedford two years ago. Trying to be able to help piece these people's lives together afterwards. Working with local nonprofits and the city to bring services such as counseling, shelter, food, and clothing to those displaced by fires. Community coming together to help is what helps make the change and makes the difference. I've had one counseling center already say that they, they'll be able to help people and give them case management uh, to help navigate through the housing system and, and advocate for them. New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell also praising the work of the number of local organizations that quickly got to work. HSPM facilitated the placement of people uh, who had been displaced by the fire like within hours. The response happens when people work together and it works really well. Uh, New Bedford. But Lima says this tragedy is tough. Not just the tra traumatic events of losing everything that you have. And these people have so little, but they lost even that little that they have. Reverend Lima says that anyone who would like to help out can do so by contacting the Interchurch Council with all the donations ranging from clothing to gift cards going directly to the victims. But reporting live in New Bedford, Matt Paddock, 12 News.